All right, guys, so up to this point, we can fetch customers. Uh, we can fetch all of our customers as well as by ID, individual customers. Now we want to be able to add, edit, and delete customers. And, and these are, this is going to be done through mutations because we're actually mutating the data. So it's actually pretty similar to what we've just done. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go under, uh, let's actually go right to the bottom here. And we're going to create a variable called mutation. All right, and we're going to set this. Let me just put a comment here. So we're going to set this to a new GraphQL object type. And in here, we're going to pass in our curly braces and we're going to give it a name. So you can see this is very similar to what we've been doing. So name is going to be mutation. And then it has fields. Okay, so fields. And first thing I want to be able to do is add a customer. So we're going to call this add customer. So this also gets a type and it's going to have a customer type because that's what we're dealing with customers. And it's going to take in args. Okay, because when we add a customer, we're going to have to obviously add in the fields we want to add. So we're going to have a name and we're going to set that to a set of curly braces and we're going to give it a type. And this is going to be a GraphQL string. Now, I also I want to make these fields um, required. So when we insert a customer, we want to have to be able to, to insert a name. So for that, we're going to use this non null. Remember, we brought this in GraphQL non null. So we just want to wrap this right here. Uh, let's see. So actually, this is going to be type new. Yeah, so we'll say new GraphQL non null. And we're going to wrap that GraphQL string like that. OK, and then we'll put a comma here and let's just copy this. And then we also want uh, an email which will also be a string wrapped in nom not non null and then also an age which will be an int so graphql int but we still want it to be required so we're going to keep it wrapped in non null okay next thing we want is the resolve okay just like we've been doing and resolve will take in parent value in args okay and then in here we want to make a post request to add data. So we're going to use Axios again. So let's say return axios.post. Okay, so in here we're going to make a post request to our server, our JSON server, which is going to be localhost port 3000 slash customers. Okay, and then we're going to put a second parameter here, which will be an object with our data. So name. And remember, we can access it with args. So args.name will do email, which will be args.email, and age, which will be args.age. Okay, and then again, it's going to return a response. So we're going to say dot then. And we're just going to map res to res.data. Oops, that should be an arrow. And that should do it. So let's go ahead and save. Now, in order for this to work, we need to add our mutation variable that we created right here to our schema. OK, so we're going to go right under here and just say mutation. OK, you could do mutation like that, but we'll use ES6 syntax. Since they're the same, we can just get rid of that. So let's save. And now we'll try to do our mutation through graphical. So let's go ahead and just clear this. So I'm just going to reload the whole thing, get rid of that. And now we're going to try to do our mutation. So we're going to say mutation and we're going to set our print our uh, curly braces. And notice over here in the documentation explorer, we now have our mutation here and it gives you the actual function or the actual mutation of add customer. OK, and notice that if we go to query uh, root query type, we have customer and customer. So it's a nice little map of all of our data. OK, so let's go back over here and we want to call the add user mute uh, add. Did we call it 
yeah, add customer. You see it actually pops up here, which is cool. And in here we want to put our fields. So we have a name. And let's say we want to give the name. Uh, we'll just say we'll say Harry White. And let's do email. So we'll say Harry. Uh, Harry at Gmail. And then let's say age. We'll say 34. Okay, and then we want to open up our curly braces and what we want to get back from this new customer. So let's say we'll say ID name email. So let's cross our fingers and press play. And there we go. So we get it back. Add customer. Now, uh, Jason server is actually going to add the ID. Okay, it's going to generate an, an ID for us. And it gave us back the name and email. Now, if I go back to uh, VS Code and we go to the data.json file, you'll see that Harry White is now there. Okay, so we've inserted a new customer through graphical, through GraphQL. Now, again, we don't have to be using this, this JSON server. We could just as well use MongoDB or, or something else. Okay, so that's what's really cool about graphical. You're not, you're not limited to a certain data store. So let's go ahead and add some other mutations. So we'll go back to our schema. And what I'm going to do is copy the add customer because these are pretty similar. So let's copy that and then we'll put a comma here and then paste it in. And we're going to we're going to do a delete. So let's change this to delete customer. Still going to have a customer type. As far as the args, we just need an ID. We don't need any of these. It just needs to know which one to to delete. So let's say type. And again, this is going to be non null. So we're going to say new GraphQL non null. And then we're going to wrap GraphQL string. OK, so it'll take in an ID. And then for the resolve, what we'll do is a Axios dot delete request. OK, and we need to put the ID in the URL here. So we'll say slash and we'll concatenate args dot ID. And then we don't need this second parameter here. And then that should do it. So let's save. Let's go back to graphical. Okay, and now we're going to do our delete mutation. So let's see, we're going to say mutation. And it should be listed over here if we go right here, delete customer. So mutation, uh, delete customer. And we want to pass in the ID we want to delete. Let's delete user four. Actually, we need to say ID four. And then we'll say return ID. Now, I, I believe it's going to give us null because it's not the, the customer is not going to be there, but it should delete. So let's press play. Gives us back null. Let's go check our JSON uh, data.json file. And four is now gone. All right. So we've now made a delete through graphical. So now let's take care of an update. So we'll go back. Let's copy add customer again. You can see how easy these mutations are. Paste that in and let's call this one edit customer. And uh, let's see. As far as args, we're going to do an ID as well. So I'm just going to grab this from the delete. Okay, ID is going to be the only one required because we might not want to update the name or email or whatever. So what we'll do is just get rid of the um, the, the non null. So I'll get rid of that. Because if if we make them required, that means they're not going to be able to just update a single field or, or a couple fields. They'll have to do them all. We don't want that. And then as far as the resolve, we're going to do a patch request. So Axios patch and we're going to put in here uh, slash and then concatenate the ID so it knows which one to update. And then we can just instead of passing this in, we can just pass in args. OK, the entire thing and then just map to res data. So let's save that. Let's go back to graphical. Uh, let's just reload this wise. 
All right, so let's go ahead and try it. Let's first look over here. So we do have our edit customer mutation. So we'll say mutation, uh, mutation, edit, customer. Okay, so we want the ID of the customer we want to edit. Let's do customer two. And let's say we want to change the age to let's say 50 okay and then we need to return something so we'll just return the, the id and the name so let's run that and now id2 keith wilson we probably should have returned the age so we can see it but we can simply go to our data.json file and now keith wilson is now 50. all right so we now have full crud functionality with our graphical server so that's going to be it, guys, for this series. Uh, I hope you found it informative and it taught you a little something about GraphQL. Uh, it is a it is an, an awesome technology, and this is just scratching the surface, guys. When we get into you know having more collections and having relationships and how data can all be interconnected, it gets really really cool. So that's it, guys. I will seriously think about and look into building a front end to this back end, maybe a React application using Apollo or something like that. Um, you know, so we do have a UI, something to look at. But uh, that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you stuck through this series, that's awesome. And I will see you in the next video. So if you guys really like my videos and you learn a lot from them and maybe you have a couple extra dollars to spare, check out my Patreon page. I'm working on creating special content for patrons. You also get special deals on future courses, and there's even an email support tier for all YouTube videos and projects. To learn more, visit patreon.com slash traversymedia.